Hey guys, this is Reckles with Want to Buy Gold, and I wanted to talk to you today about some of the upcoming gold making and transmog changes that are happening in Legion. Of course, just to be clear, this is only the first couple of days of the alpha. Everything's subject to change. It will change. A lot of this will be different when it actually comes out to release, but the general idea is there, and we can go on that in theorycraft a little bit. Also, I wanted to say that I've just been having a blast with the Demon Hunter. Like, it's a really fun class where you you get in there, you rough it up with them, and then every once in a while, you do your eye laser and you just unleash a ton of damage. Um, and then, you know, you've got your metamorphosis cooldown that just, you know, you slam your fist in the ground, you turn into a uh, this, this huge hulking demon and uh that's still quite feminine if you're playing a female character um and just tear shit up it's great um my favorite thing to play with is the dash ability um and there's this empowered fell crystal that lets you have no cooldown on your dash for two minutes which which lets you do some ridiculous stuff it's really, really fun, um, but if you mess up your jumps just a little bit, uh, you can fall off the edge of the world. That's what I've been doing. Oh, also, hunters, not demon hunters, but just regular hunters, uh, you have a new spider that you're all going to have to start fighting for. It's a pretty sexy spider. I like it. So, let's talk about transmog. There's a new transmog uh, interface called the wardrobe coming up. And they took a lot of cues from Diablo, where once you loot a piece of gear, the appearance of that piece of gear is, you know, bound to your character, bound to your transmog options for the rest of that character's life. And that's absolutely great. I, I don't know for sure if this is going to be an account-wide thing. Part of me hopes that it will be, but at the same time, feel like that would make it too easy? We'll see though. I love the general idea though. We just have so many pieces of gear that we're collecting that, you know, you have your PvP set, you have your rating set, you have, you know, you have a couple of transmog sets for each of those, you have some alternative gear that you maybe need that has better stats for this or that, you have some gear that you don't quite want to throw away yet, and then, uh, look, your bags are full, even with the incredible bag upgrades we've had. So what effect is this going to have on the market? I put a blog post out a while ago, like a year or two ago, and it was talking about whether or not Transmog actually sells any better on PvP realms versus PvE realms, and the conclusion was there's actually no difference. Like, people use Transmog at the same rates, no matter what their realm is. The, the thing that I didn't include in that, but I noticed, was that about half of the max level decently geared characters I looked at, which is where my sample came from, only half of them had any transmog at all. Transmog is kind of a gateway drug, right? Like, if you have a piece, a, a really awesome sword that you want to transmog, and you're like, oh my gosh, I got Ash Condi. Oh my god, I could totally use that. That's the biggest sword in the game. That's awesome. I'm going to use that. Or, you know, the World Breaker Mace. Like, I'm going to use that. A tiny gnome with Ash Condi. That's fantastic. So if you do that, you're doing it through this really easy to get to interface. Like, it's, it's, you choose your mount, you choose which toys you use, and oh look, you accidentally clicked on the wardrobe, and you can use Ash Condi. That's so easy. So at that point, you get a lot of new people into the transmog market, which increases the demand for transmog across the board. Um, when people say the transmog market is saturated, I kind of wonder if they know what they're talking about, because like, what that is implying is that everyone who will use transmog is using transmog. And like I said, it's at 50% and there's a decent amount of churn. Churn being, you know, some people stop playing the game and then some new people start playing the game. Some of the people who stopped playing were people who used to really transmog and they're replaced with people who want to transmog too. You know, a 50-50 chance of a new person wanting to transmog 
and then uh, they don't have any of the gear. So you're always going to have new buyers entering the market. Well, now it's not a 50-50 anymore. It's going to be a 40-60 or a 30-70. Like, you're going to have a lot more people like, oh, you know what? Everything but my shoulders is red. I'll just go to the auction house and buy a piece of red gear. The only thing I'm a little worried about is if it's account bound items, then things that you have bought multiple times because you bought it and threw it away and need to buy it again, you'll never need to buy again. So that will actually decrease the demand some. So there'll be a little bit of balancing out, but in general having, you know, two million more people interested in transmog is gonna be a big deal. So, you know, too long didn't read, uh Prices are going to go up and the turnaround is going to be higher. So, you know, rather than it taking two months to sell a piece of gear for 20,000 gold, uh, it'll take a month and a week to sell that same piece of gear for 27,000 gold. If I were to guess, like those, like I'm completely pulling numbers out of my butt, but that, like, if I were to guess, that would be about the range of increase and decrease that we're looking at. So, um, that's all I'm going to talk about today. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be doing more Overwatch guides. I got some more Heroes of the Storm guides for you, too. Uh, just hang tight on that, and we'll have more info from the Alpha. Talk to you guys later. Bye.